I read a total of, I was gonna say 40, that would be insane. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my November wrap up part 2. I read a total of 20 books this month so I am splitting it up into 4 different parts. So like I said this is part 2 which are the next 5 books that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have to talk about in this part of the wrap up is Under Shifting Stars by Alexandra Latos. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Aubrey and Claire who are twins who were inseparable until the death of their older brother Adam a few years back and now things are not the same. Audrey is neurodiverse and has been struggling with fitting in with those around her and adjusting to her new school. At the same time, Claire is questioning their gender identity as well as their sexuality and becoming closer with a student named Taylor and it's like the story of both of them dealing with these situations. This book wasn't bad per se. I think I just didn't like either of the sisters so I wasn't really able to enjoy it. The way that Audrey was babied throughout the entire book really bothered me because she had the ability to be treated like an adult. That's one of like my biggest pet peeves is when people treat neurodiverse people like they're babies and they don't understand anything so it just rubbed me the wrong way the entire book. And then I didn't like Claire because she was just so rude to her sister even before Adam's death and it just made me angry the entire time. So like I said I just couldn't connect to either of the sisters and therefore the enjoyment of the story definitely went down for me. I also was not a fan of any of the supporting characters except for Taylor. I just felt like a lot of these supporting characters were very one-dimensional and just were thrown into the story for the sake of needing other characters. I did like the exploration of gender identity and sexuality and I think that it was portrayed in a way that will be relatable for a lot of people. I also liked how support supportive Audrey and Claire's parents were, although like I said before I didn't like how they babied Audrey for the most part. I also really liked how both sisters grieved their brother in different ways, which ultimately led them to their distinct paths of acceptance and self-discovery. Like I said before, I really like Taylor as a character. I think that they were a great addition to the story. A lot of people are not going to have a Taylor in their lives who are so supportive of their transition and self-discovery, so I think it was really great to see that relationship grow in the book. But yeah, like I said, I wasn't able to connect with the characters and I think that brought the story down for me, so 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is A White Ivy by Susie Yang. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Ivy Lin who has learned from her grandmother how to manipulate those around her. As she grows older she wants nothing more than to raise her social status in society and that's when one day working as a school teacher she reconnects with the sister of her crush from middle school. Sophia ends up inviting her to a party that she's hosting on New Year's that her brother Gideon will be attending and when Ivy turns up there she she becomes closer with Gideon and it seems like all of her dreams are coming true until a person from her past comes back into her life very unexpectedly and things go a little bit crazy from there. The book starts off very slowly giving the backstory of Ivy Lin and her family immigrating from China to America. It did take me a while to become invested in the story and Ivy as a character. I think that she was very interesting to read about and it was very intriguing to try to figure out what her motives were behind the things that she did. She is a very, very unlikable narrator. I personally really like those kind of narrators, so I was here for her, but it made it very hard to root for her. It wasn't until like part three out of the four that I truly became invested in the story and wanted to keep reading to figure out what was going on with her life. I do think that the book is rather predictable, but then again, I have read so many thrillers <laughs> that I'm usually able to call them. I wasn't able to call the big plot twist at the end so I still got that shocked feeling so it was enjoyable to me. Overall I do think that it was an exciting read once the story picked up a little bit. I think I'll definitely be checking out a lot more of this author's work when it becomes available because I think that they have a lot of potential to be a really great author in my opinion so I'm here for this book. The next 
next two books I'm going to be talking about are from the same series. The first is This Mortal Coil and the second book is This Cruel Design. They are by Emily Suvada. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars and this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Katarina Agata who is the daughter of Lachlan, a very famous geneticist who has been given the task to create a vaccine for a very deadly virus that is attacking the world. After being separated for two years from her father after he was abducted by Carthaxis, an evil corporation, a very dangerous soldier named Cole shows up on her doorstep claiming that her father is dead. He bears a message from Lachlan saying that he finally cracked the code for the vaccine but Carthaxis is after it and therefore she needs to work together with Cole in order to crack the code in order to save the world before it's too late and it's like the story of that. I actually ended up liking this a lot more than I initially thought I was going to. It does start off a little bit slow but once Cole arrives on Katarina's doorstep things begin to pick up and I definitely became invested in the story. The science behind this story and the ability for everybody to gene hack through the panels in the body was really interesting to me. I really loved learning more about the science and the world as the story progressed. I do at times have a very weak stomach for gory things so at times I was a little grossed out because there's a lot of like cutting of limbs and a lot of blood in this book so go into that with caution if that's something that you are not the biggest fan of. I was not the biggest fan of the romance. I think that the love triangle in this was very weak and it should have just been left out in my opinion and had more of a focus on the virus and trying to stop it. But it wasn't like the biggest downfall for me so I still really did enjoy the story and I really loved all of the characters and their backstories were very interesting to learn more about. This book ended in a way that I was not expecting so I immediately picked up the second book which is This Cruel Design which I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. It picks up pretty much right where This Mortal Coil leaves off. I definitely enjoyed the first book more than this one but it was still a very enjoyable read. You get to know more about Kat and her backstory in this one. The writing style is very addictive and it makes you want to continue reading because the things that these characters are going through are just so crazy. I loved learning more about every single character's backstory in this. It's just so intriguing. I definitely am still not a fan of the romance in this. It is technically a love square now but still a love triangle because one of the love interests from the first book has dropped off because something is discovered but like I'm still not a fan of it and still would rather focus on the science of the series. I really like the introduction of the new characters. The three that stand out the most to me were Mato, Regina, and Anna. I think that they were very interesting and brought a lot to the story. I also think it was really interesting how Suvada used Watson, Crick, and Franklin as surnames in this series since they were so big on the DNA and double helix in the real world so I thought that was a really cool inclusion to the story. I'm not 100% sure how many people would pick up on that but I'm a science major so I just know a lot about DNA I guess. The book does leave off on a giant cliffhanger so I'm really interested in getting my hands on the third book. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like This Vicious Cure or something like that so I need to find a copy so I can figure out what happens to these characters because I am truly invested in the story. And then the final book that I have is Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I know a lot of people did not like it. I personally just thought it was a very average read. So in this world there are three types of people there are celestials who are people born with powers. There are specters who create these powers by draining the lifeblood of mythical creatures and then there's people with no powers. Brighton is a YouTuber who has made it his life mission to capture the spellwalkers in action who are a group of vigilante crime fighters. His ultimate dream is to gain powers at the age of 18 and fight alongside them. When his twin brother Emil is gifted powers that he's never wanted and is asked to join this group. He is very bitter and jealous but he decides that he is going to stick with his brother even as the danger around him rises and it's like the story of that. 
I was initially very excited about this book when it was first released because I heard that it had something to do with phoenixes. I had recently read Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Petro, which is about phoenixes, and I absolutely fell in love with the idea of phoenixes. But unfortunately, this book was nothing special, and there wasn't really that many phoenixes, so I was very disappointed in it. I don't think that this story was bad per se, but I was not a fan of the writing style. It sounded like a grown-ass adult trying to be like hip and cool like the teenage were and I just couldn't get behind it. There also just wasn't a lot of world building and I'm still a little bit confused with the magic system and everything that goes on with the Celestials and the Spectres. I think that the idea of the Celestials and the Spectres was really cool and I think that if it was executed differently and explained more it could have been really good. I also just wasn't a fan of either of the brothers in this, especially Brighton. He was just so self-absorbed and entitled and he just irritated me for most of the story. I did like a meal a little bit better but I do think that he was very unmemorable. I also was not a fan of the romance in this. I think that it was very weak and honestly should have just been left out of the story. I will say that the diversity and representation in this book is very well done and should be praised but overall like I said I don't think that is anything super special and I know that a lot of people were very disappointed in this story so... I mean, take that as you will if you want to pick it up, but I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was part 2 out of 4 of my November wrap up for 2020. I will have all of them linked down below when they are uploaded, so check those out if you're interested. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!